a good relationship with United States, uh, we can say, is the cornerstone of Pakistan foreign policy for decades. Initially, during the Cold War, Pakistan played uh, very close to the U.S. And in fact, uh, uh, the critics and experts say Pakistan has been responsible for the demise of the formal Soviet Union, what the Reagan would call it as an evil empire. And now, after the Salala incidents on November 25th, this is the lowest point. This was the, in fact, lowest point in Pak-U.S. relationship. And now the NATO supply has been resumed. So we are now again, once again, at the crossroad. We have today with us Dr. Abid Qayyum Saleri, who is the executive director of the SDPI and uh, has attended many conferences and has good knowledge of the subject. Dr. Very warm welcome to SDTV transmission. How do you analyze this situation right now after this NATO supply has been resumed and what is the connotation? Pakistan was getting isolated, uh, especially in the developed world, uh, uh, who constitute uh, the membership of, uh, majority of them, who constitute uh, uh, the membership of uh, NATO forces. So that, that was first thing. The, the second thing is that uh, nowadays it's not only foreign policy, it also has to uh, do with your uh, economic policy as well as our uh, uh, relations uh, with international financial institutes. Now, a country like Pakistan, uh, which is dependent on international financial institutes, especially IMF and World Bank, uh, ADB, uh, and also uh, to some extent uh, when it uh, looks at bilateral development agencies, although uh, fortunately the development uh, aid or development agency uh, doesn't make uh, the lion's share of our uh, GDP or our uh, budgetary uh, expenditures. Uh, but one was seeing that Pakistan was getting isolated, uh, especially with IMF. Now, we have to see the composition of uh, IMF. We have to see the shares that United States has in uh, the IMF. So by virtue of its share, uh, United States can veto any policy, anything uh, in IMF. Similarly. By virtue of its share, uh, United States can block uh, any policy uh, in World Bank. So much so, United States had so much uh, leeway uh, in ADB, Asian Development Bank as well. Uh, now, <coughs> after the budget, one could see that Pakistan's economy is extremely fragile. Pakistan may have to go back to uh, IMF uh, in order to uh, take care of its balance of payment or even in order to uh, pay back its uh, initial uh, p p payment from the previous standby loan. Now, if uh, Americans they are upset with us, uh, obviously IMF is not going to treat us uh, fair uh, because we were not able to fulfill the, uh, prior, uh, the conditions of a previous standby agreement. So it was in this context uh, that uh, Pakistan has to uh, soften its stance. Now, if we look at uh, uh, Americans' uh, implications, to me it's not only a supply route, it's exit route. So for me, while uh, Pentagon, they say that they have been losing almost 100 million uh, uh, dollars uh, per on uh, uh, supply. Uh, I would say that uh, the Pakistan is extremely important because if, and there's a big if in it, uh, if and when Americans, they decide to gradually withdraw and phase out from Afghanistan, they would require a route like uh, the smooth and uh, uh, like very uh, secure and permanent route like uh, the Pakistan to bring out all their equipment and all their hardware, which are worth billions of dollars. After this initial status quo, the uh, initial uh, this uh, exchange of uh, heated statements, uh, finally it was in the interest of both uh, the governments to compromise and to come up with an agreement where Pakistan can secure its economic and financial interest, American they can secure again not only their economic and uh, financial uh, interests, which they are uh, securing by reducing the cost of uh, transition, but uh, also to secure their uh, heavy equipments. So I think uh, that was a turning point. It was a compulsion rather than result of any prudence on the both sides, especially on the Pakistani side. As I, as I told you that it has to be the foreign policy or the foreign then, relation. Then an immediate question arises: then why in the first, first place this extreme decision was taken then? I have a lot of respect for parliament, I have a lot of respect for uh, the sovereignty of uh, parliamentary wisdom. Uh, but to begin with, perhaps this issue was not handled very carefully by the parliament. Uh, the best uh, approach uh, could have been where 
all the heads of uh, parties present in political party, uh, the two, three key persons, they should have deliberated upon this issue, they should have pondered upon these issues and uh, a group of technical experts, those should have highlighted all the pros and cons so that a political wisdom could arrive based on some uh, well-informed uh, argument. So unfortunately our position, those were not well informed, we just realized that perhaps we can uh, pressurize the American government, we can blackmail them and uh, it that did not go well. Did, that did not go well. Um, viewers here, we take a short break and we'll discuss more on the subject after we come back, so please don't go away. It's diverse. It's original. It's SDTV. Welcome back. Doctor, this incident has taken shape. It was, uh, initially it was blown out of proportion as an incident which was sort of an aggression by the United States against the armed forces of Pakistan. But later on, another chip was added and it was played as a transit trade issue. The United States has been standing one, spending 100 million US dollar a month over and above which it has been using uh, in, for the supply through Pakistani route. And the demand, the per container demand, which was huge initially in Pakistan, now that apology has come and the supply has been resumed, we don't find that amount or any mention of that anywhere. Pakistan is still being portrayed as a hub of terrorism. And uh, even uh, our uh, quote unquote, uh, the old friend uh, Saudi Arabia, if he is arresting uh, some uh, suspects and handing them over to India, who have been traveling on Pakistani passports, would mean that uh, uh, the image of Pakistan internationally uh, is fading out as a responsible nation is fading out uh, very rapidly. Now, uh, any uh, person uh, with some uh, clean image or positive image can definitely argue, but a person with rogue image uh, cannot argue. Of course, it will be difficult for him or her to even prove uh, its legitimate uh, position and perhaps that's what happened with Pakistan. In our part of uh, the world, again, there were a lot of uh, domestic uh, problems. Now, on one hand, uh, we had uh, opposition that is taking, that was taking a very strict stand. On one hand, there was uh, the government that was trying to take a strict stand, but then its own credibility and its own legitimacy was shaking and ultimately the Prime Minister, uh, he got uh, disqualified. Uh, and still a uh, third uh, actor uh, was uh, these organizations like uh, uh, the Five Pakistan Council, the Defense of Pakistan uh, uh, Council. And again, they were taking a very rigid and uh, very hard stand. And while taking any position, one has to take care of all those and one has to see where, where this competitiveness lies. Do you think that the few arrests that was made in Saudi Arabia and that were handed down to the investigating authorities in India and there they have come up with startling confessions about certain things and that was responsible for immediate change of heart and the Pakistan has allowed or Pakistan has come under that pressure? I think that may be one of the reasons, but then there are many other reasons as well. Uh, our, I mean, as for the timing is concerned. Yeah, but even for the timing, there are uh, other reasons as well. We are uh, finding uh, the crisis, uh, the, the democracy was uh, getting threatened, uh, the judiciary was getting threatened. So it was scam after scam and uh, none of the institutional pillar is uh, safe or secure. So for the very existence of the state that has been allowed. Of course, um, this is my perspective. That, that would be one of the reasons. As I said, that there would be many more reasons in it. But one of the reasons is that uh, somehow we need to take off the pressure, internal as well as external pressure, under which this, uh, Pakistan as a state uh, is uh, facing. And uh, the opening up of uh, uh, these supply routes, they would slightly ease off this pressure. So th that was compulsion rather than a happy decision. What are the economic co connotations now? It has been opened and as they say the coalition support firm which is about uh, one point some, one point three or four billion dollars and the carry Luger leftover of 
some 900 million dollars. Uh, as I said, it, uh, of course, uh, many more things would come with it. Uh, the negotiation with IMF uh, would be part of it. The negotiation with World Bank uh, would be part of it. Uh, the issue of uh, foreign uh, direct investment would be uh, part of it. Uh, the issue of bilateral uh, cooperation, especially on energy, uh, uh, would be part of it. This would open door uh, for new possibilities. It's a window for new possibilities. Uh, debt uh, we were closing. Should it be backed by some some political reformation, if I, if at all? I don't want to use the word cleaning up. Uh, I think only the time can t uh, tell it. Uh, the political ref reformation, the political cleaning up, perhaps uh, that would create another chaos. Uh, There's a very old uh, pr proverb uh, that if it's uh, not breaking, don't fix it. Uh, perhaps we should follow the same approach for the next six to seven months and unless and until uh, this government completes its uh, constitutional tenure, uh, the fresh elections, uh, those are announced. And the elections in the United States. Yeah, and the election in the... Then. Yeah, over They will then. become more rational as far as the narrative is concerned at uh, least. Uh, of course. So perhaps we need to give time and uh, uh, currently the status quo uh, perhaps that could do. So viewers here we take another break and uh, after the break we'll talk more on this subject so please don't go away. It's diverse. It's original. It's SDTV. Welcome back. Dr. Sab, there is an issue of mistrust between the two countries. This trust doesn't seem to exist anymore and the media that is close to Pakistani establishment is openly saying that the United States is uh, fiddling inside the Pakistan and it's responsible for what is going on in Balochistan. So I had, uh, first thing first, there was uh, never these lovey-dovey relationships. Uh, if the lovey-dovey relationships were there, uh, the Ayub Khan's uh, uh, autobiography, Friends Not Masters, uh, back in uh, 60s, that should not have been there. So even then the perception was when Pakistan was uh, this uh, uh, Cito Santo ally, very close to uh, Americans, even then Ayub Khan had to say that uh, Americans are treating us like masters and uh, uh, not like uh, friends. Uh, that is first. Second, as you mentioned, that in foreign policy, it's the interest of the nations that matters. And those interests, they somehow vary and diversify on various issues. Now, Pakistan may have uh, one interest in economic sector, another interest in political sector, still another interest in env environmental sector, uh, another interest in security sector, and all of it may have been happening simultaneously uh, in the same uh, frame of uh, uh, things, in the same uh, state of things. Uh, similarly, for Americans, uh, even uh, the groups and departments within Pentagon or within CIA or within uh, the, this uh, uh, Washington, uh, they would be working simultaneously. So the group, uh, the head that is in charge of, for example, Iran policy, they have been working on this. And they would know that, OK, Pakistan perhaps is trying to give some edge to Iran. So they have to curb it. Similarly, uh, the group that is working on aid section, they must have been working on uh, this whole context, how governance can be improved. Uh, uh, the uh, group that have been working closely on uh, track to dialogue with the Maulana F Fazlullah, Maulana Fazlullah, or even with the Haqqanis, they have been doing with own thing. And you may never know that, like uh, Pakistan or like any other country, uh, many of these things they happen in silos. So there are domains uh, under domains in one state and many of the time there is no integrated policy and uh, we keep on criticizing, uh, for example, Pakistan that there is lack of integration uh, among and between ministries and various uh, government agencies. The same is uh, in case of uh, Americans where you will find a lot of contradiction, lot of contradictory actions uh, among and between their uh, policies and when these layers of contradictions when they somehow 
merge with each, each other, coupled with very active and vibrant media uh, on both sides, coupled with the media interest on both sides, coupled with the perception that uh, people have about each other. So the ultimate result would be cultivation of mistrust. And that mistrust is uh, very much there. So you, what you're saying is that there are groups within groups inside one, in, on the both sides. And do you think there is a grouping in the not all eyes? For example, after Salala issue, Europeans have presented a very different face. Well, I think it's a simple old tactics, good, good cop, bad cop strategy. So all of them, they can't be bad cops. Otherwise, the door for negotiation. One is beating you, and another is embracing you. Yeah. So I think it's very. Otherwise, they're thick. It's it's very classical, uh, good cop, bad cop strategy. But then uh, Europe uh, at uh, many issues and at. Uh, various times that do, do take an independent stance. Uh, European Union, when we talk of uh, uh, NATO's policy, it's not one country's policy. And we must uh, remember that Europe is uh, going through a very tough phase, even the whole uh, European Union, the whole existence is being threatened. Uh, so you find the governments which are very uh, uh, slightly left to the center, you find governments which are slightly right to the center, you find governments which are pro-American, you find governments which are anti-American. Uh, quote unquote, if not uh, directly anti-American, but they try to take stances which are uh, anti-American. So the message that comes from uh, European Union, uh, one can't take it as a reflection or representative of a single European country or single uh, NATO uh, country. Uh, so if they are, and the messages that emerge from any single nation, for example, from the United Kingdom or from uh, any other nation, that cannot be dubbed as the official policy of NATO. So what we received, it was the individual messages uh, from various individual members of uh, NATO states, not from NATO forces as such. The emergency that came from the United States was, uh, one of the reasons behind that was that they narrate that while they're pulling out of the Afghanistan, they need this route to be restored fully so they can use it in a very supple way. But do you think uh, they are serious to pull out or they will be staying here till 2025? Even if they are not serious to pull out, they have to have their contingency plan. So for an operation on this massive scale, one simply can't say that because we are here for, till 2025, we don't have to do any alternative uh, mm -hmm. arrangements. So it would be scenario A, scenario B, scenario C and simulation would be there. So if all other factors they are like this, would be staying here till 2014. If things don't work like this, we'll be staying here till 2020, or maybe 2050, or maybe for an unlimited period of time. But then all these uh, independent factors, which are acting independently, uh, you never know that how they will, those would unfold. So it would be a wise uh, approach. If anyone who is uh, sitting there uh, would take the same approach, that uh, they should get ready and get prepared for any contingency plan. Do you think other issues are also related to this not of supply? For example, the bulk of containers that found missing after without paying any custom duties. And now mm, media close to the establishment is coming forward and openly saying and uh, the Americans supplied arm to these militants through those containers. So do you think these sort of issues are also um, attached to this not of supply? I think there must have been uh, many of uh, uh, these issues. And if they are there, I think Pakistan, government of Pakistan, they should uh, put them on table. Uh, if anything that goes against Pakistan can get tabled by international community. So if Pakistan <laughs> has any strong evidences uh, of uh, Americans involvement, anything that uh, Pakistan has against uh, any other nation, including Americans, that must be tabled. And if there are evidences that uh, some of the arms which were uh, to be supplied to Afghanistan uh, are being distributed there to the armed groups or the insurgent groups, uh, if Pakistan has uh, any evidences, those should be shared, not only with the people of Pakistan or the media, but uh, also internationally, so that international community can make a wise judgment and uh, can take an a well-informed decision. There are many variables attached to this not of supply. What is the single most important variable that Pakistan must negotiate? And second, 
uh, how in economic terms that should be negotiated in best interest of Pakistan. In economic terms, Pakistan should try to get technical or financial support to solve its energy issues. I won't be going for transit fee, $5,000 per container even, $10,000 per container. That won't matter much. The most important, the single most important thing is at how America can support Pakistan, if not civil nuclear technology for generation of energy in any other matter so that Pakistan can get rid of this energy crisis which is uh, hampering uh, its uh, economy and has paralyzed a uh, whole uh, walk of life and also creating political instability. Uh, the single most important uh, question for uh, the, the elected governments and uh, the people making playing the shots in both the countries, how to restore this trust? Thank you very much. Viewers, you can watch this interview at our website, at the site of DST TV, and at the Twitter and um, Facebook also. Thank you very much.